a little bit over a year ago, I created a video on how to monitor services and get notified if some of the services are down. It's now time to talk about the latest add-on that was just recently added to the Home Assistant by Frank. It's Uptime Kuma. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Monitoring critical services or any services is really important. And I do not talk here about the commercial services only. I also talk about our internal home or smart home services. If, for example, my home assistant is down, I will be getting complaints from my family. If MQTT would be down, my home assistant would still work, but some of the critical light services would not be available. If my store J would fail, I will not be receiving my storage tokens. So there are a lot of reasons why you should be monitoring some of the services. A year ago, as I previously mentioned, I created a video that helps you monitor various services from within Home Assistant. And you can then create sensors and use those sensors data or sensor values to create automations and get notified if some or all of the services are down. But now we have one additional monitoring service. This one is add-on for Home Assistant that's been added by Frank and it's Uptime Kuma. And that's not all. Since we have no use of monitoring services that is not integrated in Home Assistant, we will also be trying to integrate it with HACS component. Yes, there are various other ways that you can try and edit, but I think that embedding it locally would be the most beneficial way. Let's first install add-on. Go to Settings, Add-ons, Add-on store, scroll to the end of Home Assistant community add-ons and let's click on Uptime Kuma and install. After the Uptime Kuma was installed, I recommend that you tick the switch next to Watchdog because this service will act as a watchdog or service monitoring and we want to have it up and running as much as we can. In the configuration panel, you cannot do much. The only thing that you can do is choose a different port if your port 3001 is already used. I'm going to leave it a default. Let's go to info and let's start it. My recording setup is a bit slow, so it will take some time for this add-on to be started. Let's go to logs, refresh, and the line we are waiting for is listening on 3001. If we go back to info, we can now open web UI and it will open it in a new window. First thing that we have to do is select the language, username and type in the password. Create. This username will also be used in HACS later on. This is the default page or dashboard and now we have to create new monitors. Press on plus add new monitor. First thing we have to select is monitor type. You have HTTP or HTTPS, TCP port, ping, HTTPS with a keyword, DNS, push, Steam, game server, and MQTT. For the simplicity of this video, I will be creating two HTTP ones and one TCP port. Let's first add TCP port. Name will be store J1. Host name is 192.168.135 and port is 28.967. Heartbeat interval is the interval between the checks. You can leave it a default which is 60 seconds or you can lower it. I will leave it for now the default value. If your service is down, retries specifies how many retries there will be before reporting that the service is down. I will put here 1. And the retry interval which I think 20 is the minimum value, is how many seconds there will be delay between retries. Advanced allows you to use this upside down mode. Upside down mode is something that I think is useful if you have active passive system. And if your passive mode is active, meaning up fully and running, then you will be alerted with the down status because something is wrong with your primary system. Let's press save. Here it is, store J1, ping is 10 milliseconds and it's up and running, all green. Let me quickly add one more. My two nodes are here. 
but let's see how you can track your Home Assistant instance. And I have, I think, four currently running at my home. Add new monitor. We'll be using HTTP because in this case, I will be using instance without the SSL certificate. Home Assistant main. I will remove S and type 1 and 2, 168, 136 with the port 8123. Heartbeat will be 60, retry is 1, heartbeat interval is 20 seconds. For the HTTP, HTTPS, you have some more advanced settings. Certificate expire notification, which if you are using HTTPS with the SSL certificate can be a good thing. Ignore TLS or SSL errors for HTTPS websites is good if you are using self-signed certificates. And once again, upside down mode. You can also limit maximum number of redirects and these are the accepted status codes. Let me press save. All three of my services are now up, but how do you add them to Home Assistant? For this, let's go to GitHub and the link to that GitHub repository will be in the description of this video. It says here that this integration is temporary and is expected to soon be merged into Home Assistant Core. But until then, we have to use this HACS integration, which is a custom HS integration and it's not directly available in HACS. Because of that, let's right click, copy link address, and go back to our Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, go to HACS, Integrations, click on three dots, Custom Repositories, Paste the link that you just copied, select category integration and click on add. If everything is okay, now in the list of new repositories, we will have Uptime Kuma available. And here it is. Click on the name, download this repository with HSCS, download, and that's it. One trick you can see or you cannot see because it's under my back. It is saying it's pending restart. What you would normally do is go to the developer tools, YAML, check configuration, restart. But let's try something else. And this has been mentioned by the devs or home assistant developers on the Matter Workshop for all those of you who listened carefully. Let's go to settings, integrations, click on add integration and search for uptime Kuma. If you do not see it, try pressing Ctrl F5 or clear browser cache and reload and repeat this search integration. It should be available here without the restart of Home Assistant. That's a neat trick. We have to specify the host URL 192.168.1.201, port is 3001, username is the one that you specified during the install and password also. And we will not be verifying the SSL certificate. Don't forget to specify HTTP or HTTPS depending on if you are using SSL or not. Created configuration for HTTP and this is the IP address. Let's press finish. And after you've set up the integration, you should see something like this. This is a custom component integration icon and the cloud icon. Cloud is because the service itself can run in cloud, but we are using local Uptime Kuma server. If you are wondering where your data is, let's go to Developer Tools. In States, search for whatever name you type for your service. I have StoreJ1, StoreJ2 and Home Assistant main, I think. StoreJ1, Binary Sensor, it's here, it's on. StoreJ2, once again, it's here and it's on. And the last one was Home Assistant, I think main, this one here. For each of the monitor services, this integration is creating binary sensors. In future, there may be some additional attributes because if we check under the hood, this is the metrics page of the Uptime Kuma and this is everything that is currently available to us, but unfortunately at this point still not visible in Home Assistant. Now that we have that information available, we can go to our monitoring page and add those entities here. And of course, we can also add them or create automations. One of the basic scripts or automations that you can create with Home Assistant, of course, is to go to settings, automations, create automation, start with empty automation, storage, 
one failed. For this, we will be using state of the store j1 binary sensor to off for let's say 10 seconds. And action can be call service, notify, period bot, store j1 server is down. Save. With this simple storage j one automation, you will receive notification whenever sensor or binary sensor changes to off, and off means that the service is not available. Yes, of course, there are a lot of other things that you can play with, what you can get notification for, how, when, etc. But this one should work and do the job. And this is it for this Home Assistant How To with Bearded Thinker. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video and that you will find it useful to monitor whatever services you have, either on-prem or off-prem, because yes, you can also monitor external services. If you did find this video useful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, because it not just means a lot to me, but it really helps with the YouTube algorithms. And if you're following me on Twitter, you also know how many fails I had with today's video. So it would really mean a lot if you would like this video. If you still haven't subscribed, Please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video releases and of course streams. And if all goes well, this Saturday we will have one stream. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always leave comment down in a comment section below. Or even better, go to the Discord server and leave your comment there. And before we end up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support, but also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by becoming a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button down below. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.